Hey guys and gals, Todd from Lowbrow Customs here. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, SNS Super E carburetors. Now we're basically just going to disassemble carburetors, show you what all the components are and what they do. We're not going to go over tuning it. And if you like this video, you can check out our other videos right here. All right, first thing we're going to talk about is this is the stock SNS backing plate for a Super E carburetor. Uh, one thing worth mentioning, if you are going to switch out your stock air cleaner, this is your float bowl vent hole right here. Pay particular attention on the new aftermarket air cleaner, of which we have many to choose from on our web store, that it does not block this hole. If it does, I'll, once I get the cover off, I'll show you a plug you can remove if it is blocking that hole. If that is blocked, the gas won't flow very good because it needs to vent to atmosphere. Uh, one other thing about the, uh, I don't have the part, but on a stock plate, there is a lever attached to this hole right here, uh, the screw right here, that controls your enrichment circuit. This is not a choke. It basically adds more fuel for startup. Uh, we also have some of those available on the website, lowbrow brand. This will take the place of the lever when changing to an aftermarket air cleaner. If you are going to run your stock SNS backing plate and you want an alternative to the standard SNS teardrop air cleaner, uh, Lowbrow Customs has come up with this nifty product here, which takes the place of the stock air cleaner cover. Uh, simply remove your stock one, replace it with this. Has the correct bolt pattern for the SNS backing plate. Uh, we have these available in ribbed, like the one I have here. We also have them available smooth and fish scale in aluminum, polished aluminum like this one, and they're also available in black. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, remove the backing plate now. Now one other thing worth noting, very important that these three screws on this any are sufficiently tightened and I, it is not a bad idea to use Loctite because if one of these screws does come back itself out, guess where it's going to go? It's going to get sucked into your carburetor right on through the other side and head on into your engine. Okay, stock backing plate. See how these factory screws have a blue lock patch on them when you are assembling it and that basically, and once again, you want those to be nice and tight, but you don't want to over tighten them because this is an alloy carb body and you don't want to pull the threads out of here because you're cranking them on down hard. Okay, now that we've got that off, we can see some of the other features of these carburetors. This large brass screw is going to be your air fuel mixture. Once again, this is your enrichment. This is your throttle stop screw right here. And this is your accelerator pump adjustment. Very frequently when I worked at a Harley dealership, uh, bikes would come in with these carbs on and the customer would say it keeps fouling plugs. And a lot of times I would find that the customer thought they were turning their idle up when they were turning the accelerator pump adjustment up where it basically gives it a bigger squirt of gas. Uh, the, other, the other thing I forgot to say about the enrichment is when using these carburetors, when you're starting your bike, you want to, it does have an accelerator pump. So if you, it's an older bike, you want to give it a couple squirts before you turn your ignition on in a prime kick as is a very ritualistic thing to do with older bikes. Uh, when you're using this enrichener, once the bike has started and the enrichener is in the up position, you want to shut it off right away. If you do not, it will more than likely foul your plugs within a matter of minutes because it's adding fuel to mixture for startup. Okay, the other thing I did forget to mention here is earlier in the video I did tell you about how we have this bowl vent, which is right here. And that coincides with a hole on the stock backing plate right there. And if you can see it on the other side there. And if you remember, I was talking about putting a aftermarket air cleaner on. You don't want, if it does block that hole, you can remove 
this plug right here because if you look down in there you can see that that passageway connects with this. So if your aftermarket air cleaner is blocking that hole, remove that plug and it'll still vent to atmosphere. Now we can go ahead and remove this and take a quick look at that. As with any air fuel screw, it's going to have a tapered end on it and that's going to regulate the air fuel mixture. It's important that the spring is on there. That keeps tension on the screw so the setting doesn't go away. Go ahead and take out the enrichment circuit. Half inch wrench. And you've got spring and a plunger. All right, now that we have the stock enrichener removed, uh, I'll show you how easy it is to put one of these uh, Lowbrow Customs enricheners. Uh, it basically has a knob end that will allow you to turn it on without having the stock backing plate. We have those available in brass and chrome. Really simple thing to do, just threads in. No big deal. See, there's the has a spring on it. Looks just like the stock part, but it doesn't have the button for the lever. Now the way this works is you're just going to pull it up and turn it and that opens up the enrichment circuit for starting purposes. Just drop that baby in there, thread it down, tighten it up, that's all there is to it. Boom, she's on, off. And since we're going to be taking some more stuff apart, I'll just pop that back off. Now, we'll go ahead and remove the float bowl, but before we do that, I'll show you how easy it is to change a main jet without removing the float bowl. Basically, this is your float bowl drain plug. It takes a 5 8 wrench. And then you're going to pop that out. Please note that it does have an O-ring on it that is required for it to seal. And then if you look inside the hole, you're going to see the main jet looking at you. So if you are just changing a main jet, you can just use a stubby screwdriver when it's mounted on the bike and unthread it. Stubby flathead screwdriver. There's your main jet. All main jets are marked on the side with what size they are. Okay, one other uh, neat product we came up with here at Lowbrow Customs are these extended float bowl screws. Normally they would just have a very short flat head screw in there. Uh, when the carburetor is mounted on the engine, it can be very difficult to get to this back one. You see how it's sticking down now. It's going to be very easy to get to that with a wrench when the carb is mounted on the bike. So if you're doing a jet change or checking your float level, you know, It'll, it makes it much easier to remove the bowl when it's installed. Uh, we do have those in brass, and we also have them available in chrome. Those are going to take a 5 16 You can use a wrench or a socket either way. We'll go ahead and take the bowl off. One other thing, this is your fuel inlet where you're going to connect your fuel line. And we'll see what's happening inside here once we take this bowl off. It'll gain access to the other two jets that these carburetors have. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, pop the float bowl off. Okay, we'll go ahead and concentrate on the bowl for right now and then we'll switch back over to the card body to show you the jets. As you can see, here's our float. There's a screw that retains the pin for the float. It is very important that your float level is correctly set. There's also your float needle in there. 
which is connected to this tang. So we'll go ahead and pop that off. Also notice this little O-ring here. Very important that that O-ring is back on there and in good condition when you're putting your ball back on. So here's your float, your float needle, which controls the flow of gasoline in and out of the bowl. Attaches to that arm right there. And if you look here, it just drops down. There's a seat on your inlet. So that just fits in there like that. And as the bowl raises and lowers as gas is being consumed by the engine, it, this lets gas in or out of the bowl. If your float isn't set correctly, you may find that you have a bunch of gas coming out of your overflow. That's a pretty good indication that your float is overflow, your float is not seating on here. Or there could possibly be just a small piece of dirt in there that came from your gas tank. Uh, you'll notice there is no filter on this carburetor, like some carburetors do have a filter that won't allow that. So on this type of carburetor, it's probably is a good idea to have an inline filter. Uh, either inside your gas tank at your valve or in the line going to the carburetor, an inline filter. We have those available on the website if you need one of those. <clears throat> this is your accelerator pump housing. Uh, one of the screws is holds the bowl to the body, so there's only going to be two screws left once you have the bowl off. Go ahead and remove these two screws and show you what we got going on underneath here. Okay, there is a rubber diaphragm here. That goes in conjunction with this lever. So basically when you're working your throttle, see how it's, that's going down. When that pushes against this, it squirts some gas through these passageways and comes out inside the carburetor to add fuel. Uh, one, one, this needs to be in good condition. It, it is removable, it will come off of here. Notice there's a, a spring underneath it. And there's a groove. It appears that when someone was working on this carburetor, they kind of slightly pinched the edge of that. Probably wasn't causing any major difficulty, but you can see that it now is deformed and not in the greatest of condition. So that is something to be aware of when servicing one of these carburetors or rebuilding it. Uh, it's a good idea to just go ahead and replace that. When you're putting it back together, you do want it to be centered. Obviously, you want to have the spring in there. And then you want this to ride in that groove when you put it together to make sure everything's good. And then you have a couple of O-rings here. And it's imperative that those two O-rings are in those two locations and also in good condition. Once again, this is your fuel inlet, which also has an O-ring on it, the same as the drain plug O-ring. And now that this is removed, we can show you the, how the needle sits in there, like so. And you can see that the needle is tapered. There's also a hole there that that taper rides on to seal it off once the bowl is full. One other thing, as my fine cameraman noticed while filming, is he noticed that this tiny little spring and check ball came out of this hole when I took the bowl off. I'm sorry, when I took the cover for the accelerator pump. That is going to go in this hole right here. Like so. Very important that those are in there when you put the carburetor back together. Basically, it's a check ball system. 
connected to the passageways on this. There it is again. We'll show you a close up of that. And this nozzle with the O-ring on it is actually what sprays the gas when you work the accelerator pump. See how it is connected to that passageway? Comes up through here and sprays it into the engine. Okay, it's also imperative that you have a good seal on your bowl. So if your gasket is old or distorted, your paper gasket on the bowl, it's not a bad idea to replace that. See how it's kind of giving me a problem coming off? It was stuck on there. There's your bowl gasket. And then we have your intermediate jet, which is right here, which is also removed with a flathead screwdriver. Hmm, that wasn't very tight. And also has a size on it. This is a 0.295. Those will all have sizes. Okay, the only other thing I haven't taken out of here is the emulsion tube, which is this right here. Not a bad idea anytime you're cleaning a carburetor to remove all the components to make sure there's no swarf, dirt, anything stuck in there. Uh, if you are changing, you can just remove the accelerator pump rod by pulling out the bottom. There is also a rubber uh, little bellows thing that keeps dirt, moisture out of there. You'll get those in a master rebuild kit. Probably not a good idea to tamper with those two screws on this. If, you, if there's no reason to remove this assembly here, a lot of these uh, are peened over on the back side and you will destroy things by taking those out. Generally, you can just open that up for cleaning purposes. Uh, this is a push-pull type of throttle setup where you're going to have a two cable system on there. One opens the butterfly and one closes it. Uh, it's also a good, good thing to say that a stock Carly cable is not compatible with an SNS. So if you are doing an SNS carb swap from a CV to an SNS on a modern Evo style motorcycle, you will need new uh, cables. This is an O-ring that seals this to the manifold in conjunction with a gasket. Uh, good idea to check that to make sure it's in good shape. It's very easy to change that out. Uh, we also have a master rebuild kit for these carburetors on our website that's going to come with all the fun parts we just talked about. This is a flange style mount where it's got two bolts going through this, the manifold. And even though it is a flange mount where you're going to bolt this to, if you are not using a stock backing plate, if you're using an aftermarket air cleaner, that doesn't affix the carb to the cylinder head, say, unlike an Evo. We also have this uh, nice gas box part here, which is an SNS carb support bracket. That will go from the bottom mounting hole on the manifold to the center bolt on a big twin. It actually says it fits pan head, shovel head, and Evo. Nice little product, works real well. And you can run your hose through the center there so it doesn't get on the hot cylinders. And thanks for watching our video today. Come back and see us again real soon, kids. Peace out.